Enigmatic E. Hey everyone, today I will be talking about 10 free plugins for After Effects that I think are very cool and will be useful for many projects, whether it's music videos or AI videos. I'm gonna show you what they do, how they work, and ways how you can use it with your project. Just to let you know, some of these plugins are already included in After Effects, and some of these you have to download from a website, but I will include the links to those websites in the description below so you can check those out. All right, everyone, so let's get right into it. The first plugin I wanna talk about is the Effects Console. It's basically a way to access effects really fast so you don't have to go into the menu looking for an effect like trying to search for it type it in in here and then having to drag it in or double click on it all you got to do when you have this effect press control space or a mac command space and then you have this little box that appears here and you can put in like for example glow and then the effect appears here and you just click on it and a glow is now applied to that layer another cool thing you can do with this is if you come back and we press control space again, you can take screenshots of whatever the frame it's on. So like, for example, I wanna take a screenshot of this frame right here, control space, and then take a screenshot. And then here you open the gallery and you can see that your screenshot is saved here and you can always export it. You can save it as a PNG or a JPG, or you can even go directly here and just export as a PNG or a JPG. Although you can do this in After Effects without this plugin, it is just so much faster to just screenshot and then just export it this way than the way you would normally do it in After Effects. Second plugin I'm gonna talk about is Saber. So this is also a free plugin. This is what they use for lightsabers and stuff. But here you can use it for like transitions or opening portals. I'll put up a clip where I did it with an AI video where I created a portal. And it's so easy to change the way the Saber looks by just coming into the settings and choosing a few different options like you know, here, Pulse. So the way this works is we have to create a new solid. So I just right click, new solid. I can name it whatever. I'm gonna just call it portal right there. And then now that we have this new effects console, then we press control or command space. Then I'm gonna type in Saber after you installed it, of course. And then it's gonna pop up there. I just press enter. And now you have this black screen with the Saber. You wanna come here to mode and you wanna put this to screen. Then the black background goes away and now you just have the saber here. And you wanna come here to where it says customize core, you wanna come here to core type and put in layer mask. What this does is now that you create any kind of mask, it's gonna make the saber follow that shape. So for example, I'm gonna make a circle here and I just make a circle and it's gonna make the saber follow that. You can also just change what the saber actually looks like as well. You can keyframe the mask path, for example, here you know, make it extend all the way. So I'm gonna make the circle extend this way. And then, so that's what, that's how you get this effect. Then obviously you can even make this smaller like this, but for now I'm just going to leave it like this. So it's gonna extend like this. And if you wanna create a mass for like a transition, I'm just gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna take off the saber off of one of them because I don't need the saber on one of them. And then I'm going to track mat this to the top one to the one that doesn't have the saber. And now it's gonna use that mask that I created to make this transition. So use opacity by pressing T, keyframing the opacity. So you have a little bit of smoother transition between when the mask starts to expand. Another cool effect you can use is this thing called Displacer Pro. We have already in After Effects this thing called Displacement Map, but Displacement Pro just gives you so much more options. You can get this like data mosh looking effect here with this by playing with the X and Y translate parameters and you can rotate it. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. It also has some chromatic aberration effects that you can play around with. It's very, very cool. Not only that, but you can also uh, add like a map layer to this. For example, I have a layer here with noise and I wanna add that to this. So let's add noise to this by going here to map layer and going to TV noise. And you don't see the effect right away, but when you mess with translate here, you start to see the effect that's having. 
because it's following that noise. It doesn't have to be noise. It can be like, I have this other layer here with a bunch of grunge effects. And so you play it back and you have all these cool effects that are happening, but you also see the video clip be affected by all these textures that are just playing throughout this video. Another effect that is super cool and useful and I used a lot, it's called Turbulent Displace. So let's use the example of the portal again, right? Let's add Turbulent Displacement to this. Let's also add it to this other layer here. So as you can see, it already distorted the shape that I had created for this originally, and it will keep it that shape unless I create some keyframes. So in this situation, I would wanna create some keyframes because I want it to be changing and distorting more as time passes. So in this case, like, let's see what this is doing. So you can see how this is affecting this and you can play around with the complexity to kind of make it even more like granular and then evolution. So this is gonna create like this wave effect. So this might be very useful for like example like this. So here in evolution, I'm gonna create a keyframe. I'm gonna move the keyframe for the evolution at the, to the beginning. And then I'm going to just have it evolve throughout this transition. So I'm just gonna move this up so that you can see movement as time passes. And I'm gonna bring this a little bit further. So you're gonna see how it's starting to warp like that. And obviously you wanna add the same exact effect to the layer on top or wherever. It doesn't have to be on top, it can be anywhere. But you wanna make sure that these effects are also here. Yeah. So now you have this same effect on the mask as on the saber layer. You can even put it on your actual video clip. You can create like this dream effect, you know, like a doo -doo 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 -doo. The next effect I'm gonna talk about is called Dojo Glitch. And this is just, you know, what the name implies. It's for glitch effects. Um, let's try to pop it up right here. Dojo Glitch version 3.0. And all I gotta do is go into the composition that I'm in and that I wanna use it in and then press glitch and it says glitch setup complete. You put okay. And it's going to, you know, make all these layers appear and then add all these effects automatically. So if I just press play, you could see some effects that it's having already, but you can alter some of these effects and these glitches by just coming to the top layer here. And then you can mess around with a lot of the intensity, chromatic aberration, for example, like this. Right here in artifact intensity, you can push this up and get like this crazy, even crazier looking glitch. You got this lens distortion that's also a very cool effect. Again, you can keyframe this and create some very interesting looking stuff. So there's a lot of little parameters you can mess around with. And I think this is just a very cool, useful tool that is just quick and easy. The next effect I wanna talk about is quick chromatic aberration. So I'm gonna type in quick chromatic aberration three. There's a lot you can do with this. Like you, know, you can mess around with the rotation, with the scale, with the anchor point. There's just a lot of flexibility you have with this. Once you move like the position, then you can play with the hue, which creates this really trippy looking colors. Obviously this is just like, if you're kind of going for like just this trippy vibe, you can keyframe the position and just mess around with it. You can play with the stylistic parameters where it kind of distorts everything right here. and looks really trippy and crazy. Yeah, like this, this is like really cool effects that, that you can mess around with and keyframe and just do really interesting stuff with. So this next effect I'm gonna talk about is called Radio Fast Blur. It, it creates this effect almost as if there's like this big light behind your subject and it's creating these rays that you can see. I'll show some clips where I applied this effect in a way that I thought was really interesting. So the way we do this is we create a adjustment layer. So we right click, go to new adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, we wanna put tint. So control space, tint. Then we wanna add curves and then radio fast blur. And finally, a second curves effect. So from here, we wanna come to the first curves effect. So we wanna come here and bring this in right here on the top. And then we wanna bring this bottom one in as well. It's going to just really, really highlight the bright areas and keep the dark areas really dark because we want the light to shine off the bright areas because that's what makes sense, right? The light is shining through 
where the bright areas are at. So then we also make sure that we go here into mode and we go into screen so that we can see the color. And then from here, you can really mess around with the amount of the radio fast blur and you can see how it's shining already. And you can mess around with the center where you want the light to shine through. You know, you can mess around with how intense you want this. And if you don't want it to be white, this is why we have our second curves. You can change the color by coming here to channel instead of RGB, we're gonna go to, let's say for example, green. I wanna bring in the greens up here and then you're gonna see like the light is green now. And then you can mess around with the colors however you like. You can add the blues or remove greens or do whatever you want. The next plugin I wanna talk about is the Car Dance plugin. And it creates this really unique looking like particle effect. You can play around with the parameters to you know, intensify this or you can make the particles even smaller. But uh, yeah, so how do we do this, right? First, let's put in the plugin, Car Dance. And we're gonna come here to where it says rows and columns. We're gonna put columns follow rows. And right here where it says gradient layer one, I'm gonna select the clip that I'm using. So in this case, this clip and gradient layer two, I put the same thing. So then I come here to X, Y and Z position parameters. And I'm gonna put intensity one for each one of these. So now when I mess around with the rows here and I bring this up, then you start to see like the particles get smaller and smaller and you know you can mess around with whatever parameters you want there um, you know if we bring these down it's going to look closer to the original clip you know you can play around with this and you can play around with some of these parameters they all seem to do different things uh, like reds um, green it, it gives it a different look. Definitely check it out. All right, so another plugin I wanna talk about is Pixel Poly. This is basically, like you already see it, it's, a, it's like this glass breaking effect. You can always do really interesting transitions with this as well. Like if you rotoscope somebody and you add this effect, it adds something very cool to it. Or for example, let's say you duplicate the layer, you remove the pixel poly from the bottom one. Let's say you just like mask out something, just a, a section, and then you have like this glass breaking effect. You can have like literally somebody flexing and suddenly like, bam, the glass breaks or something like that. Or a transition between like an AI animation from real life to AI. So uh, obviously there's parameters to this. You can. Uh, mess around with like the force, how strong this is gonna be, like how, how much is it gonna bounce off of him, you know? Like you can play around with gravity, like how fast it's gonna fall. And like, obviously if you bring the gravity down, it's gonna have like, it's gonna stay in the air longer as if you're like in lower gravity, which is very cool. You can also keyframe these, you know, if you want these to like spin around, you can have it like spin around like this, which is very cool. You can play around with the direction of where everything is going, kind of randomize it. Yeah, there's, so there's a lot you can do with this. All right, so the very last plugin I'm gonna talk about. So there's this thing called Mr. Horse. It has a free starter pack. You can purchase more uh, packs, but the there's a free one that has a lot of cool things already included. And that's why I'm including it in this list. Uh, if I come here to window and I go to animation composer, I can open here and here are some starter packs for like some transitions. Like if I want, you know, a logo to pop up, if I want my screen to pop up somehow, like for example, let me use this one right here, easy position scale. So you're gonna see it pop up like that. It comes with these text animations, a lot of little cool effects here. Here are some letter boxes, some vignette effects. There's also uh, a bunch of graphics you can use like arrows and like all these little cool animations you see here. You got these effects for like, if you have a YouTube channel, like remind people to subscribe and uh, like the video. There's uh, sound effects as well. Again, this is all starter pack. This is all free. There's also other features like anchor point mover. Like it gives you the ability to put the anchor point of your video on the left side, on the right side. So for example, if you rotate, it's going to rotate on that anchor point. If I put it in the center, it's gonna rotate from the center 
like just quick access to anchoring to different parts of the screen. Another cool feature that you have access to is this thing called Keyframe Wingman. When we select this, we get this window that pops up where it shows you these two sliders that you can move up and down. So what this is used for is when you create keyframes, for example, so I'm gonna create keyframes for scale and position. So it's going to zoom in and zoom out. Typically, this is very linear. If you come here to graph editor, you see how everything's very straight looking. But if I select these and I right click and then put keyframe assistance, easy ease, or I have a shortcut, which is F9. If I put F9, it's going to change the way this looks. Now everything's a little bit more curved. Everything's a little bit more smooth. So typically from here, you can leave it like this, or if you really wanna edit a little bit more of the movement, you can come here to graph editor. This is typically where you would mess around with the parameters. However, now that we have this keyframe wingman, we don't really have to mess around with that as much. We can even select all of these and or select them here. And then you can play with the wingman sliders here. Um, as you can see, it's doing everything kind of together. However, if we remove the chain here, you can do these individually now. And now it's going to lean towards one side. And for example, let's say I want it to start off fast and then slow down and then fast and slow down again. So bam, and then fast and then slow. So this helps out a little bit so you don't have to be pulling on these. And you actually don't even have to go into the graph editor. You can like select it here and do it from here if you wanna just speed things up. So that's the cool thing about Keyframe Wingman. All right, everyone, so those were 10 free plugins that you can use for After Effects. Hopefully this list was useful for you. If not, if you have some other plugins that you would recommend that I did not mention here, definitely let me know. I would definitely include it in the future if I think that they are worth mentioning. Thank you everyone for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps out. And like always, take care. God bless. Peace.